Good day everyone. My name is Nora Shikin Muhammad Tamrin and I'm representing my friends in uh, presenting the concept paper of our project with the title of Long Range Data Transmission for Online Water Quality Monitoring at a Rural Area in Sungai Tembeling, Pahang. In this 10 international conference on ambient computing application services and technologies, Ambient 2020. So, uh, below uh, here is my contact email, uh, norashikin at uitm.edu.my. So, if you have any question regarding on this presentation, you are always uh, welcome to email me. First of all, I would like to apologize for not presenting uh, for not presenting physically at this conference because due to uh, COVID-19 pandemic, our country uh, not allow us to uh, travel abroad uh, for the time being. Before I proceed with my presentation, I would like to introduce to you the researchers behind this project. Uh, which is uh, including me. Um, I'm a lecturer and researcher from the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, University of Technology Mara, which is in Shah Alam Campus, Malaysia. And next to me is Muhammad Farid Misnan, also a lecturer and researcher from the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, University of Technology Mara as well, but he is residing in Pasir Gudang Campus, Malaysia. Uh, next is Nick Noliana Nick Ibrahim, uh, which is she is also a lecturer and researcher from the Department of Environmental and Chemical Engineering uh, from University Putra Malaysia, and our international collaborator, Professor Navid Sharagi, uh, also a researcher from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering and Bioengineering of the School of Engineering from Santa Clara University, United States of America. So here uh, is the content of my presentation, which is divided into five parts. I would like to uh, start the presentation with the introduction, then discuss the problem that is available at the current uh, research area, and then the objective uh, to solve uh, the defined problems, and then a methodology, which is the proposed work uh, in giving the solution to the designated problem statement. And then lastly, I would like to end my presentation with a conclusion. Um, Tumbling River uh, is the main Pahang River tributary which is resided in Malaysia and then uh, this is the map of Malaysia which you can see here Malaysia is divided into two sections. The first one is the Peninsular Malaysia and then the second one is the East Malaysia. So Pahang is located at the Peninsular Malaysia. Okay. And then you can see from here, Pahang is among the largest state in Malaysia, which is come to the third uh, largest state in Malaysia after Sab uh, Sarawak and Sabah. And also in Pahang, there are 11 districts, uh, administrative or administrative division or called daerah in, in Malay words. And then Pahang occupies the, the largest uh, Pahang River Basin in Malaysia. And then two-thirds of uh, this state is covered with a dense jungle, which is uh, included of 74 forest reserves, which are 10 virgin jungle reserve and 13 amenity forests. It also has uh, wildlife reserves, parks, and also several marine parks. The most popular reserve rainforest is Taman Negara Pahang or Pahang National Park as you can see from this uh, picture. Tembeling River um, is the main tributary of the Pahang River and also well known among local and international tourists as regard to eco-tourism activities. The community in Tembeling River still utilize uh, the river as the source as the main source of clean water and food. And then there are a few residential areas, uh, which are the village of Magdaling, Pagi, Bantal Village and also Kuala Saj, which are still relying uh, on boats as a mean of transportation uh, through commercial boat. Furthermore, a small number of local 
uh, of locals perform aquaculture activities on the Tembling River, uh, where the fish species that are, that has been bred, such as patin and talapia, for commercial use. Okay, so from this picture, you can see uh, these are the type of aquaculture activities that occur along the Tembling River. The extensive anthropogenic activities or human activities at the entrance of the uh, of the Pahang National Park has been reported, including the land clearing for the construction of hotels, resorts, and restaurants, improper discharge of wastewater from these amenities, and intense navigation by boats, causing the river pollution. Then, following the monsoon season. A higher concentration of heavy metals such as silver and cadmium is displayed in the river water. Likely source of minerals in the water is from the area's natural geology. The study suggests that the water supply in the National Park is of acceptable quality for recreational purposes. However, continuous monitoring of environmental pollutants is essential to prevent any recreational water illness. In 2014, there are an extreme flood event has been occurred in the states of Pahang. This incident caused massive damage to the surrounding region as well as substantial damage to the infrastructure of the cities. Much untreated raw sewage entered, uh, much untreated raw sewage entered the Pahang River during flood events, which caused contamination of the rivers and surrounding environments. And therefore, the problems of the cleanliness of the river. Unforeseeable climate change and the loss of fish and shrimp have influenced the daily uh, life and income of the nearby residential or nearby villagers. A continuous water monitoring system at Sungai Tembeling, uh, Pahang, to monitor the impact of ecological and anthropogenic activities on fishing activities is therefore important and needed for future improvement and development of fisheries. Okay, from this figure, you can see the massive destruction which was caused by uh, the flood and extreme human activities and boating activities at the entrance of the uh, Pahang National Park which has made uh, the river become muddy okay, and then affected the nearby residential area here. And also during uh, the drying season, uh, during the dry season, sorry, uh, the Tembling River is also drying up okay, due to this heat wave. So here is the research area that has been proposed which is Kampung Pagi Tembling River Pahang. Kampung Pagi is one of the red residential area nearby Sungai Tembling Pahang and it always become the main hotspot for the tourists uh, when they come to Pahang National Park. And this, uh, as this is the res residential area and therefore the terrain here is quite even, which is suitable to be, uh, which is suitable to implement the proposed long-range data transmission for water quality monitoring system at Tembling River, and that's why we choose this uh, Kampung Pagi as our main research area. The implementation of an online monitoring system can be an advantage, okay, in monitoring uh, the water quality at Kampung Pagi Tembling River. However, there are few associated problems that has been identified. The primary constraint to this implementation of this project is the limitation of the available network in the rural area. The telecenters has been built by the Malaysian government. However, uh, in Pahang, the telecenters or the centers are quite far uh, from Kampung Pagi and it also a challenging for us to assess the network from this area. Beyond the challenges of 2G connectivity, another problematic element of wireless data transmission in the remote monitoring site caused by the uneven uh, terrain that creates limited coverage. It will result in a non-line line of sight link between the transmitter and the receiver. Previous research typically only uh, investigated the type of fish of fish species, biological effect to the fish occurrences and the sociological impact on the Tembling River community. The online system implementation to track the river water quality uh, and the communication media are still not be published or reported. Uh, and therefore, uh, more works are needed to understand the behavior of the communication signal at uh, Kampung Pagi 
uh, or the remote sites at this tumbling river. There is a demand for a cost-effective and reliable technique to establish the communication medium in rural areas such as Kampung Pagi. To address the problem of limited access or mobile signal coverage such as GSM, WCDMA, LTA and 4G at the Tembling River remote site, we propose a procedure for wireless data transmission between the water sensor nodes and the base station by using the repeater technique. This technique is implemented a long-range data transmission which is using the RF serial protocol such as XP for transmitting and receiving the data in this work. One of the advantages of using this module is that it offers the ability to operate on cheap batteries for monitoring and control application for years. The proposed RF long-range data transmission system consists of three parts, namely sensor node, data extender and base station. Each part is equipped with the Transceiver RF XB Pro module, which can be configured to serve as a transmitter and receiver. The operating range of each XB Pro RF module is estimated around 3.2 km for line of sight communication at outdoor, which has been reported previously by uh, one of the researchers. So theoretically, the values from the sensors node transmitted to the base station could be extended or repeated by adding extenders network in every uh, 3.2 kilometers. However, because of the uneven terrain in Sungai Tembeling area, it can limit the signal stream and therefore the acceptance range of the RF signals and number of data extended module may be varied. In the sensor node, the RF module acts as the data transmitter. So at this particular sensor node, it, it is going to have several water sensors attached to it and then each of the data from the sensors uh, is collected and appended in an array. So the array is going to be conveyed to the data extender module system from the sensor node. And each array packet has an identifier header to identify the node when it comes to the base station later. At the data extender, also known as the data repeater, the RF module that has been set at the data extender is going to uh, obtain or receive data from identified multiple sensor nodes and then it's going to transmit uh, this data to another data extender or to the base station. This data extender module can be placed in any appropriate location at Kampung Pagi which will be determined based on the received signal strength RSS signal uh, that has been received by this module. So uh, with this RSS signal, the communication line will be built based on the signal to find the best, the best place for LOS communication to ensure uh, the reliability in data transmission. And finally, is the base station. The base station uh, is the last part in the communication that will collect all the data transmitted by the last extender module. The received data is filtered and identified based on the unique identification that has been appended early in the data array during the sensor nodes module. And then the controller will process the data array and then separate it into individual water parameters, which will be later, uh, pu which which will be published later on the cloud uh, through uh, some payload protocol, and then. This data is uh, going to be displayed on the IoT dashboard for water uh, for real-time water quality online monitoring system. So the design of the base station can be seen in this figure. So the base station is the last uh, station which will collect all the data from the sensor node. So these are the proposed long-range data communication line uh, for online water monitoring at Kampung Pagi. Uh, Tembeling River Pahang and for your information currently we are implementing this technique for the lake monitoring system uh, at Pasir Gudang and currently has been uh, still uh, under progress okay uh, due to uh, COVID-19 pandemic this project has uh, been delayed for uh, quite some time as the students are not allowed to come back to the university and do uh, the research but however, um, this project is going to be proceed gradually and hopefully we can uh, finish it by 
end of this year or maybe early of next year. So before I end my, uh, so I, I will end my presentation with uh, some conclusion. Tembeling River is very important as it is a provision for fish habitat, which becomes the primary income for the nearby community. Unfortunately, uh, the monsoon season floods anthropogenic activities, nearby plantation activities and boat navigation has uh, impaired the water quality at this river, which reduces the species of the fish and indirectly um, affect the income of the nearby community. And therefore, uh, the online remote monitoring system which will monitor the water quality at this river is needed. However, uh, the network has uh, identified one of the potential uh, problems that can uh, delay this implementation. Plus, with the uneven terrain and limited combination coverage at this area, the data that has been transmitted from the remote sensor must be expanded or extended through the use of the network by using repeaters uh, through RF long transmission line. And then the position of these repeaters uh, will be determined by observing the intensity of the RF signal at each node as it applies the LOS communication media. And then when the data reaches the base station, it will be transmitted to the cloud system to be displayed on the own on the online IoT dashboard. So these are the, the references of this uh, paper. And thank you for your listening. And if you have any question regarding on this project, you can email to me. Thank you again.